What's up, everyone? This is Scott Welsh, and we get together every week to talk about how we can beat the market with trading systems. And today we're going to talk about the RSI trading system, but it's got a shocking surprise ending to it. Much, much scarier than even the original Halloween. Trust me on that. Uh, three things we're going to talk about today. Should we follow the rules? Rules are good. Rules lead to discipline. We all need rules, but do we need to follow them on our trading systems? Do we? And what is the best exit on a trading system? Is it a rule-based, follow-the-leader type of exit? Or possibly something else? And how come Mike Myers gets shot and he won't die from Halloween? Never mind, don't answer that. And number three, what happens if we cross-pollinate our trading systems? Ooh, that sounds interesting. Let's get right to it. First, a disclaimer, of course, do not risk money you cannot afford to lose. This is all hypothetical stuff we're talking about here. Yes, I research it as hard as, and as honestly and true as I can, but it's all hypothetical. We're just trying to get ideas to make your trading better, okay? Okay. Happy Wednesday once again. How are we doing about Wednesdays? Do you like it? Don't like it? I've got a couple things I might consider trying. We'll talk about those in the future. But for right now, uh, we bring out bring out the video on Wednesday to accompany the email, okay? We must follow the rules. Okay? Many respected traders, and I mean famous traders. I mean traders that I trust. I mean traders who have made millions. They implore us. And yes, I said implore because it's a strong word. They implore us to follow the rules. Do not get cute with our trading systems. They beg us. I just heard this last week, a week ago. Very famous trader said, listen, when you're trading your systems, keep everything the same. Follow the rules. For example, they implore us to have the exact same parameters for long trades and short trades. Keep them exactly the same. Do not have different characteristics for long trades and short trades. Or exit and enter on the same time frames. Don't enter on a 15 and get out on a 5. Don't enter on a daily and get out on something else. Keep it the same. All right? I, I get it. Do not use indicators. Well, we've talked about that in the past. They don't like indicators. I don't know why. But they don't like indicators. Use price action or timeless principles. And if you do use indicators, <gasps> gasp. Follow the rules of the indicators. Again, don't get crazy or cute or clever. If you get clever, you curve fit, you over-optimize, you squeeze your data onto just a specific type of condition, and it will cause us harm. Okay, so these are what the smart people who have come before us want us to do. Should we do it? Well, what if we don't? Okay, let's break those four rules down one at a time. First of all, I get it, right? You get it too, don't you? If your rules for long are get in on a breakout above the 20-day high, right? We should have our rules for short trades get in on a break of the low of the 20-day low. Keep them the same, right? Otherwise, we're getting fancy and we'll get bad results. I understand that. That makes sense if you and I are talking. It's easy for us to sit around a coffee table and say, that sounds right. That makes sense. I believe that. Here's the problem. There is zero mathematical reason to keep long and short rules the same. Zero. I've been testing now since, well, the late 2000s, 2007-ish. I've been in Forex since 2009. I've been in stocks since 2004. I started trading and testing robots in 2012, and it's my favorite thing to do, or one of them. Put it on the top three things to do in my life. Maybe almond croissants, that's up there. But anyway, I have tested thousands of hours. Right? I remember I made my first robot. Uh, I spent over 2,500 hours on just one robot alone, okay? So I've put some time in, people, and there is zero mathematical justification to have the same rules for long and short. Without question, without with zero hesitation, I would tell you that the math says, not me, not coffee table talk, there is zero justification to keep the rules the same. 
The long side and the short side are not the same people. They're not the same traders. They're not the same algos. They're not the same markets. Why should they have the same rules? Okay. I get where they come from. I'm just telling you, I've seen zero mathematical justification. Superstition? Just to make ourselves feel good, we should keep them the same? I'm just telling you. We can talk more about it, but there's zero reason. Number two, time frames. I understand keeping the time frames the same. If you change time frames, you're basically trading a different instrument. right? If you're trading Apple on a daily chart and Apple on a five-minute chart, they are not even close to being the same thing. You try to take the same rules from daily to five-minute, you will fail for sure. I've seen zero mathematical evidence on this saying that you can switch time frames to keep the same rules. So I agree with that. We're in on that. Of course, I disagree about indicators. I've been studying indicators for all those years. Indicators work fine. I don't know why they get maligned. And number four, well, if you use an indicator, get in and get out in the same indicator. Do you really though? Do you? My latest research, Hmm. Well, we'll get to it right now. If we enter on RSI, if RSI is our indicator of choice, and I love RSI, I love stochastic, I'm learning to love Keltner Channel, which is kind of unknown, love Bollinger Bands, but RSI stochastic, near and dear to my heart. If we enter on an RSI, we should just exit on an RSI, right? Right? Just makes sense. I mean, that's what got us in. Wait, what, why is that? Do we really? I understand RSI is great for pullbacks. Stochastic, great for pullbacks. You can use Fibonacci and of course there are other things, but to use something rule-based that's easy on the chart, use an indicator for pullback. But what about exits though? What about exits though? Old key and, piece, key and peel sketch. Anyway, something is overbought, right? If something goes to overbought on our indicator, stochastics or RSI, specifically RSI, Overbought is relatively speaking. What is RSI? Relative strength index. So when it's overbought, it's overbought compared to what's happened recently, right? Isn't that how the indicator's made? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's it. So if it's overbought, is it really overbought from price going back long time? Or is it overbought just based on the past few minutes or the past few days? I'm just wondering, that's relative overbought. Is there something better that we can put on our charts that says it's time to get out? Okay. Well, maybe so. How about a moving average? Moving average takes the price over X number of bars, and it gives us basically a fair representation of what price has done recently. Well, if moving average makes more sense based on the chart history. What if we just skip the RSI exit altogether and go right to a moving average exit? Would that be better? It kind of makes sense in my head. Does it make sense in your head? All right. Here's the entry we talk about in the email list, and we're going to actually give all the settings now. Isn't that a special surprise? I'm going to give all the settings. I've been holding the settings out because I thought it was more organized. That may not be the case. Anyway, we're going to use this on the ES. That's our example this week. And here's the RSI system, long trade only, okay, because we have different rules for long and short, right, right, right. Price must close into RSI oversold. Okay, price must close. Then we're waiting for momentum to break. We want to see some momentum going up before we get in. So then price must close out, up out of oversold next. Okay, so it closes in and then it must close out. Then we're in and we keep the trade until it closes below the simple moving average. First, it must get above the simple moving average, and then basically we're trailing our stop because we're going to get out when it closes below. Does that sound complicated? Well, I'll show you what I mean in one second. First, here's the performance report from 1999 to 2008. Entering the ES long only on this particular method, made 58,854. The drawdown was minus 22. Um, count side, let's see, what am I wanting to look at? Oh, the percent profitable here on the right that's what i was looking for 60 percent not bad all right so those are the numbers close to close is only 15 grand and i didn't mean to go to the bottom line sorry about that i meant to go right to the charts okay here we go should be nicely in your screen <laughs> you better not have read that bottom line nobody's allowed to skip the head skip ahead in these videos all right anyway here is the es 
uh, on my chart, it's a daily E-mini S&P continuous contract, okay? So first we're waiting for, and this is from, I believe, 2018. Yes, indeed, 2018, okay? Get that back on the screen. Price is falling, falling. Oh, we're getting excited. We're ready to get in. And eventually price closes down into oversold. But we don't want to catch a falling knife, as the trading saying goes. I love cliche so much. Price closes down, and then it closes back out. Momentum has ceased, and it's going back our way. So it goes in, it closes out, and this is the RSI 10, 30, 70, 10 length, over sold is 30, over bought is 70. So it closes down in and closes back out. You enter at the open of the next bar. Down in, out, open of the next bar. Now we're getting out on the moving average. This is the simple moving average set to 25, okay? 25 period simple moving average. So now we're waiting. Price, we enter in and immediately the momentum's not over, but it does start going our way. Hey, we're in profit. And then finally it closes above the moving average. Once it closes above, we're waiting for a close below to get out. We get one more day above, and then momentum turns. Ha, ah, doesn't quite close below. This one closes below, so we're out at the open of the next bar. Got to wait for the close, open of the next bar for a profitable trade. Had that kept going in our direction, the moving average would have trailed behind, and we would not have closed until we got out. So in on the RSI, but out on kind of a trailing stop. It's not really trailing it because it's above us, but you get the picture. Let's do one more. Price then falls again on the ES, closes in underneath, closes back out, open of the next bar. Doesn't really go anywhere. Finally breaks above the simple moving average and we're waiting now for a close below. It closed below out at the open of the next bar. Got it? That is the system on the ES using the RSI 25 period moving average and the RSI is at 10, okay? So that's the system and you saw the performance report. Now you're allowed to look at the screen. Bottom line is we'll go over this and other things three times a week on the newsletter. Get in. It's free. Everyone should join. All right. Ending the RSI system with a twist actually works better. And if you read the email, the drawdown was significantly higher if you get in on RSI, let's go back to that for one second. If instead you did the same system, but you got in the same, but you waited for a close above into overbought, you did much worse. You got less profit and a lot more drawdown on the ES in the same time period using the same RSI using this method was a lot better and i've got some examples coming later in the week if you're on the email list that were also a lot better isn't that crazy by mixing it we did better than just following the rules hmm once again following the rules strictly may not be the best thing for us okay so that's the summary ending with the rsi system with a twist works better more examples to come and this of course changes everything right it changed everything for me because for sure i've been following the rules on these get in an rsi here get in an rsi there i've been building systems based on the rules because it's been drummed into me that you need to follow the rules well now obviously i need to do some more research hooray i love research okay now maybe your system follows parallel rules too and a valuable insight if i may say so myself of this video is that maybe your system could be improved huh regardless of what you trade if you're following parallel rules get in and out here maybe it's time to look at that once again all right and maybe mine does too as i said uh there's a chance we're missing out on profit just because we're following the rules now this particular system didn't have a stop loss guess what i give you a hint to do your own research if you like if you add a stop loss it is even better isn't that fun to think about 
All right. That's all for this week. Get on the newsletter. Go to scottwellstrategies.com. You should get a little pop-up. I have a very unobtrusive pop-up. You just enter your email and whatever will stop bothering you. And there's the contact information. All right. It was a surprise twist ending, just like Halloween. Hope you're not terrified. Hopefully you're overjoyed. I'll be back next week. Bye for now.